So Jackson State offers two offensive linemen. Man, that is a big need. You all know it. I know it. The whole world knows it. First, a JUCO All-American. And second, a high school prospect who has tons of potential. But here's this. These two offensive linemen are very physical and strong in stature. Boy, I cannot wait for the second signing day. What's good everyone, this is DJ's Raw Uncut Truth, giving you the raw content that you deservedly need. And man, this is feeling like Christmas in the off season. Now, this is just two offers, but these are two players that I think Jackson State can get. Um, there's a lot of proponents to this. And one thing for sure about Coach Prime, he knows how to recruit. And once, once he's down, and he's face-to-face -face with a player in their families. It's hook, line, and sinker. Coach Prime would probably recruit more studs to this team. But some players, they want to go to different conferences. They want to go to the SEC and so forth. And that's understandable. That's a powerful conference. But Coach Prime knows the weakness of this team. Offensive line. And when you have a stable of good offense alignment, you can control the pace of a game. If teams want to play cloud coverage and want to have eight DBs drop back or put eight DBs in the game or uh, have all the defensive players drop eight like they did it, uh, versus Jackson State, swag championship game and a celebration bowl to avoid that, a good offensive line would fix it. And it will punish teams that try to play soft coverage and try to scoot everybody back. A good offensive line will punish that. I already talked about the tight end. And I think, I think, I expect Jackson State to use the tight end more. But let me stay on topic. So let me talk about the players. The first player is the Juco All-American. And please forgive me if I say your name wrong. Uh, Lissala Taya, uh, he's 6'7", 310. Now on his recruiting, not recruiting, but Twitter page, he's listed as 6'8", 330 pounds. He could be bigger than what is listed on 24-7 sports. You know, sometimes 24-7 sports can get the height and weight that was in high school and not the adjusted weight. But he's a three-star in JUCO. So if you're a high three-star in JUCO, that's like a four-star in a ranking school scale. He's the number four offensive tackle in JUCO. So he's the real deal. He has Pac-12 schools looking at him, BYU, many others. Uh, he's also an All-American. And watching this huddle film, I see why. He's an instant upgrade for Jackson State. The... Jackson State Tigers need to tackle so bad. Now, we know the offensive line as a whole was a mess this year. Let's not sugarcoat it. But the offensive tackle position can create more plays for the offense by giving Shadur time. With great offensive tackles upgraded, what you do is have Jackson State to be unpredictable. So that draw play that they try to run a couple times this season and he couldn't do it, you can do that with an upgraded new offensive lineman who's just physical. Again, to play offensive line, yes, it's X's and O's, but you got to want it. You got to be a menace on that field. You got to take what's yours. You can never let anyone just stay there and just push you around. You got to have heart for that position, especially offensive tackle. Offensive tackle, you got to make sure that there's no space for the defensive ends and the edge rushers to attack the quarterback. 
there's a lot of responsibility. And also from looking at his film, uh, to Lasala, I think I said his name wrong, but Lasala, looking at his film, you can tell he's very disciplined. So the penalties that Jackson State gets, uh, I, I can bet if he commits to Jackson State, he wouldn't have too many penalties. Seems very sound, um, very smart. Knows how to use his hands and leverage. That's important. Good shuffle technique. Yes, if you're an offensive lineman, you got to have good footwork. I know it's a stereotype that these are the, the big man and you can't move. An offensive lineman with good footwork will make a lot of money in the league. Trust me. So the official visits and um, the player visits are going to be so important. I expect Coach Prime to put out a good presentation on why Jackson State is the place to be for a talented player. And LaSala is definitely an instant get. You want to get All-Americans. You want to get uh, just massive tanks on that offensive line. We call it the, uh, the first player out of the bus syndrome, which is your biggest, baddest player. They're the first one to jump out of that bus. And you and the opposing team sees that team and says, damn, it's going to be a long night. These are the players you got to get. Now, here's a prospect I've been excited to break down. That's Tupuve Amaima uh, from Utah, the number 12 player in Utah. He is big as a house, 6'4", uh, 340. He's probably bigger than that. Uh, got a little nastiness in this game. Uh, he would be a guard. He's not a tackle. He's a guard. He's an inside lineman. Uh, that would be perfect for him. He is the definition of a role grader. You see Jackson State, they couldn't run the ball even if they tried. It was like a pillow fight in the interior. And to Puve, if he commits with Jackson State, he is going to fix that in an instance. Again, you put him at guard with his 6'4", 2, not 2, but 340 frame uh, and grit mixed in with intelligence. These are the pieces you can make with this team. Now, I do believe Jackson State is going to uh, get some offensive linemen in the transfer portal. I've talked about that in plenty of vid videos. But Recruiting high school players is so important. We see teams like Alabama A&M. Shout out to Alabama A&M, the Bulldogs. You guys are doing an amazing job in getting transfers uh, to your school. But what have I always said on Raw True? You got to mix in the transfers with the high school players. You can't just go all transfer out. Even if you win more games, in the long run, it's not going to be beneficial. So it's, you got to mix it in. And I like that the JSU coaching staff is mixing in effective transfer players, JUCO players, with high school talent. So J Jackson State's not settling for any player. You got to ball. You got to have good tape. You got to be ready to step on the field. They're not getting players who they expect to, to be a bench warmer. That's not who they're getting. They're getting impact players that want to change the program to greater heights. So Tapuve is a three-star prospect. Um, he really should have been a four-star looking at his tape, but there's a lot of politics in the recruiting rankings. Y'all know what it is, man. And plus you can't rank everybody so high. So, you know, it's a give and take. But for me to see his talent and his potential, that's enough for me. There's a lot of gems who are three stars. Uh, Cameron Selman, the DB from Jackson State, was a three star. 
and he was one of the most impactful players on the JSU team. Only a freshman. So you get these type of players in the recruiting trail. Hungry three stars who want to prove that they're that guy. But this is only the beginning. Jackson State fans, do not be alarmed. The coaches are trying to fix every single problem on this team. And they're working hard. They're giving out so many offers. I know my boy, a CFL podcast, is going to break it down. Does a great job. Swag buzz. Also, just doing his thing. Um, Tomorrow, Leader Sports Network. Between the Game Sports. Uh, Coach Simmons and plenty of others. Cut Day. Blue Bloods. They're going to break these things down. So these two months is going to be the most exciting two months. Really, it's not even two months because we're in the late ends of December. So a month and a half. <laughs> month and a half is going to be very exciting. So you're going to be hearing recruiting news all throughout the month. This is DJ's Raw and Cut Truth, giving you the raw content that you deservedly need. Hit the like button, share the video, stay blessed, and I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.